Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Combibis webinar. My name is Sylvia Schreiber. I'm from Combibis, and I will navigate you through the session, which is today on creating networks for the transition to a bio-based and circular economy. We have two speakers, Soritza Kiresiva and Holger Gerdes. Both they are from the Ecologic Institute in Berlin. Ecologic is a not-for-profit uh, research institution with 100 people working in, bio, uh, in Berlin. And uh, their remit is public policy consultancy on sustainability uh, topics. Soritza Kiresiva, she is fellow at Ecologic. She is working in the institute and dealing um, with the project Biostep. We will hear right now more. And she's also dealing with um, a project, the monitoring of the sustainable develop development goals and the Europe 2020 strategy. Holger Gerdes is also at Ecologic, a senior fellow, and uh, he is working on natural capital and cost-benefit analysis, analysis and cost-effective analysis, analysis, analysis of sustainability uh, themes. So uh, thank you very much to both uh, speakers that they will guide us to their topic, what the BioStep is doing in bioeconomy policy bioeconomy governance and public engagement. So I will start with seven things you should know on bioeconomy and governance. So please, the first slide. Thank you very much. So seven things we should know about the transition to a bio-based and circular economy. The bio-based economy aims at the transition from fossil bias to bio-based products. The circular economy is focusing on zero waste concepts as recycling, reuse and reduce. Both concepts con combined have a huge potential to save CO2 and resources, but the transition will require new production and consumption patterns, new policy, and a clean bioeconomy cannot be done without policy involvement and public engagement. The policy involvement is best reflected in national bioeconomy strategies. The public engagement stands for the involvement of many societal groups from SME to NGO. And BioStep, the project, has more for you. Over to you, Soritza. And the next slide, please. Thank you, Sylvia. Hello, everyone from Berlin. I'll start with a short introduction to the BioStep uh, project. Uh, what is BioStep about? So the overall aim of BioStep is, could you please move to the next slide? The overall aim of BioStep is to promote a participatory governance of the European bioeconomy, and in particular to facilitate the participative development of, of strategies, bioeconomy strategies at European, national and regional level. So we define participatory development as a broad participation of stakeholders from academia, industry, policy, civil societies and citizens. And actually BioStep builds on the idea that this participatory development of the bioeconomy could bring it more closer to the society. So in our project we are applying different engagement tools and they are all uh, based on our concept and the BioStep conceptual framework. This is illustrated on the figure below. So you can see on the left side are the different stakeholder groups we would like to engage with. And then there are three different modes or levels of participation. And starting with the lowest level of participation, this is information and education which means basically that experts provide information on the bio-based economy and on the circular economy. So in our project, we have developed information materials on the bioeconomy, where we explain what is the concept of the bioeconomy, what are the resources that are used in the bioeconomy. We also um, give examples of bio-based products and their main characteristics. So on our website, you could also find a virtual exhibition with bio-based products. It's set up as an apartment, so one could click through all different rooms and find different products that are actually already part 
part of our daily life. And in addition to this, we have a real exhibition with tangible bio-based products that is set up in a similar way as an apartment. And um, the next level is dialogues. This is actually the consultation process we are carrying out in BioStep. Uh, we organized Europe-wide stakeholder consultation followed by three policy workshops and a um, stakeholder conference. And in addition to this, we con conducted interviews and validation meetings with key stakeholders in six case studies. And the last level, actually the strongest level of involvement, this is the functional participation or the, the co-production of knowledge. In our case, we apply uh, the so-called living lab approach in two European regions, in Italy and in Bulgaria. So the living lab is, is an user-driven process in which different people from a selected region come together and they try to come up with innovative solutions um, to a common need. It provides uh, really nice opportunities to involve people more actively in the in a policy making process because most stakeholders are really not aware of their power to support policy making. Um, and since we're talking about strategies, uh, could you please move to the next slide? So this nice map shows an overview of um, countries with a bioeconomy strategy. And it's actually interesting because you can see what's going on um, beyond Europe and that there are already many emerging but also developing countries with a bioeconomy or at least bioeconomy related strategy. So Europe is still a front runner because most countries in Europe has a dedicated bioeconomy strategy that um, explicitly address the bioeconomy. So you can find this overview, but also the links to all different bioeconomy strategies on our website, BioStep. The website is also on the last slide. Mm, yeah, could you please move to the next slide? Thank you. This graph here shows the development process via of our policy paper. So these are the different outputs of the project that fit into the policy paper. We started with an uh, analysis of the participatory processes by the development of regional and national stake uh, and national bioeconomy strategies. So first we um, started with a desk-based analysis of 14 regional strategies and of the national strategies of the European member states. And then based on this pre-analysis, we selected um, four regional and two national case studies for more, more in-depth analysis. So we focused uh, at the regional level on the Veneto region in Italy, Scotland, UK, the bio-based Delta in the Netherlands and the Saxony Anhalt in Germany and we explored the development of the national bioeconomy strategies in um, Finland and in Germany. So what we did is that we um, conducted interviews with key stakeholders that were involved in the development, in the implementation or in the evaluation of the strategies and we tried to find out um, who is involved in the strategy process, what engagement tools have been used and um, what are the opportunities but, um, but also what are the challenges of this process and we come up with good practices that we summarized um, in a guideline uh, with good practices for practitioners could be also find on our website. So I won't go into a detail because we have limited time but we'll just summarize um, the key messages of, uh, of the analysis. First of all, the initiatives um, for participative, participative governance in the bioeconomy are rare and the movement of CSOs or civil societies has just started and there are very limited good practices in public engagement but there are many good practices in the engagement of triple helix stakeholders which means a cooperation between business, academia and policy. And um, the next three steps are actually our consultation process. Holga will continue. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I will jump in here. Um, as Ritza has said, um, this uh, desk 
um, analysis of um, strategies across Europe um, served as one basis for our policy paper. And um, the second basis was um, a stakeholder process, um, which I will now briefly explain. Um, could you please move to the next slide? Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, um, we started off with um, with a European-wide stakeholder consultation. That was an online consultation um, which we developed to actually screen um, the landscape and to find out what the stakeholders uh, think about the bioeconomy and what the pressing issues are um, in terms of policy gaps um, and also to, to learn about um, potential instruments and policy measures that stakeholders would like to see implemented by policymakers. The stakeholder consultation um, took place over a period of um, two months and um, almost 200 stakeholders participated participated in this um, consultation, so that was a big success and it provided us with the basis actually for um, everything that would come for our policy workshops and the development of um, the policy paper. We, um, after that stakeholder consultation um, had been concluded, we um, started off with our first policy workshop, uh, which took place in Utrecht in the Netherlands in, in April of last year. And here we took up um, three key topics that had been um, by stakeholders had been identified by stakeholders in the context of our consultation. So uh, we were discussing issues like sustainable resource management, um, public acceptance of the bioeconomy, and um, sustain sustainability assurance um, as far as feedstocks, um, biomass production is concerned. And uh, we discussed this on a European level and came up with um, with a yeah, kind of a mix of policy instruments that could be applied um, to tackle those issues effectively. Um, then we organized a second workshop uh, which took place in Glasgow, Scotland in October of last year and here we focused on the role of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises in the bioeconomy and in the Scottish context um, maybe you know that there's a there's a policy in place uh, which focuses on um, industrial biotechnology, so mainly on, on big research organizations um, and big industries, and we wanted to find out how can um, SMEs contribute to the further development of the strategy and what are their expectations, uh, their, their requirements also for, for engagement. So we came up with really interesting um, results here in, in terms of needs, um, but, but also opportunities for SMEs um, to be um, stronger involved in bioeconomy development. Then um, our third workshop took place in Austria, in Graz, in January of this year. Um, and what we noticed in the previous workshops, um, and also partly in, in the context of our stakeholder consultation, was that it was quite difficult to engage with uh, civil society actors on the topic of the bioeconomy. So um, we decided to focus this third and last policy workshop um, only on civil society actors and their role in the bioeconomy um, by asking what should be the role of civil society actors in the development of a national bioeconomy strategy in Austria. And uh, we managed to gather um, 20, around 20 stakeholders um, around the table and uh, had a, had a half-day discussion on the potential roles of those organizations in the development of the national strategy in Austria. Again, I think we came up with highly relevant results. And the results of all three workshops um, were then summarized in a draft policy paper, which uh, we published in February of this year. And this draft um, was then discussed in the context of our BioStep Forum. It was a um, conference that we organized um, at the end of March in, in Brussels, uh, was attended by around 60 stakeholders, and here we um, 
revisited the recommendations uh, that stakeholders had uh, provided us with in the context of those workshops. Uh, we clarified um, open issues and also came up with additional um, needs and recommendations. After that conference, we published the final policy paper, which we are talking about today. So we will now directly jump into the five key recommendations of that policy paper. Um, we will start on the next slide. Thank you very much. So recommendation one, um, support small and medium-sized enterprises in the creation of new networks. And the background here is that when we are talking about the transition towards a bio-based economy, we are very often talking about new or adapted um, value chains. So um, companies, um, I mean, that, that goes also for, for, for the big industries, but, but uh, entrepreneurs and SMEs um, must find ways to adapt to those new requirements along the value chains. And, and one important um, aspect is that a new network of, network of actors needs to be established. So there are uh, players around those new value chains which have not collaborated before. And, um, and one important obstacle is that SMEs are often lacking um, the means um, to to create those new networks um, that are needed along the value chain. So um, there is a need for public support um, for the facilitation of matchmaking um, between the new actors along those new value chains. And um, we have um, identified certain aspects of how such a public body needs to be structured, what kind of approach it needs to take in order to really facilitate um, matchmaking along the new value chains. And um, just to name a few aspects, it needs to um, focus uh, not on certain sectors but needs to um, have an intersectoral approach because the bioeconomy as such is cross um, cutting and and um, and yeah, across um, different sectors so um, it needs to be clear that um, that actors from from all relevant sectors are approached and then also um, included in the matchmaking activities. Then the public body should um, focus on technology transfer from research organizations, universities um, to the private sector. There's often the thing about the, the different languages that researchers and scientists on the one side and the business sector on the other side um, talk, but within the bioeconomy, it's, it's, it's crucial um, that um, yeah, the two sides match, so uh, the public body should make sure that research results are properly, properly communicated um, to the private sector. Then the second aspect is um, the financing situation of um, SMEs. It's, it's clear that um, that new ventures often uh, find it difficult to to get uh, access to financial resources um, via via banks um, and creditors. So there's a need to provide flexible grants by public bodies. So it's the public sector that should invest in in innovations and in new ventures. Um, on the other side. Um, investors, uh, private equity needs to be attracted and um, there need to be, yeah, communication um, channels need to be established um, to, to again match investors and, um, and those who are seeking um, money. Then last but not least, a supportive policy framework is key also to ensure investor confidence in the bioeconomy. We need to have strategies, um, but also um, a policy framework um, that really um, is in place for, for a 
certain time that allows for investments to, um, to be effective. We will now move to the second recommendation and the Ritza will take over. Yeah, as already mentioned, the existing bioeconomy networks are mainly structured around this triple helix of cooperation. And, um, that's why the next, the next recommendation is that to facilitate involvement of civil societies in the bioeconomy and circular economy debates. Um, basically, um, we find out that CSOs really express the interest to be involved at an early stage and we think that this involvement should start also at regional level. And it's very important that the engagement is structured around some sub-teams related to the bioeconomy because the bioeconomy is a term, it's quite unknown and it's good to link the discussion to more common themes such as bioenergy, food or more day-to-day -to -day topics such as waste prevention or recycling. And it's also very important to develop cost-effective instrument, especially uh, for um, NGOs and CSOs. Um, as already uh, said by Holger, we've experienced um, difficulties by engaging with uh, NGOs and it was very difficult to get them on board for the workshops. That's why we think that a partial core funding could be a good instrument for engagement. And there is already a good practice example for example, the European Commission is funding is providing funding for selected environmental NGOs to enable their engagement in policy debates, and there is the current example on the UN uh, Agenda 2030. And it's also very important to increase the participation of civil societies in bioeconomy councils, forums or working group. And here the bioeconomy stakeholder panel is also a good example because they have NGOs on board. Can we please move to the next slide? The next recommendation is to increase public awareness and acceptance of the bio-based and circular economy. And um, I won't go in detail to, uh, for every single bullet point, but we'll try to give at least an example because I saw that it's already 11.22. So um, we find out that it's, there are already many good practices in other policy areas, such as climate change mitigation and adaptation. Um, one example for this is the National German Climate Initiative, where communities can apply for financial support and develop their their own energy uh, efficiency plans or initiate projects to support sustainable production, sustainable consumption or resource efficiency. There is also a competition for the so-called climate communities. So this could be also applied for the bioeconomy sector uh, to facilitate the development of bio-communities or bio-regions. Uh, policy media relationship should be also fostered. This is a way to bring information more closer to the general public because <clears throat> having information on the websites of the ministry is not really sufficient when you want to engage with the broader public. Um, can you please move to the next recommendation? Yeah, the next is to design and implement effective instruments for stakeholder and public engagement. Here we listed a few uh, engagement instruments. For example, the so-called change agents and bioeconomy bio ambassadors. They could act as communicators and translators of the abstract concept of the bioeconomy. A good practice example comes from Finland, um, where change agents are deployed to bring innovation closer to, to the people. Also, exhibition and pop-up stores could be a very effective engagement instrument um, and at the same time they could be used to initiate dialogues with, with visitors and also to get to get their feedback on the spot. And a good example for a pop-up store come from the Netherlands. The municipality in Bergen of Zoom um, set up a pop-up store with locally produced bio-based products and it was open for a few months around Christmas. Um, also, living labs and design thinking could be a good approaches for more interactive um, engagement with stakeholders. And the last 
presentation. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, it's difficult. Try go on. Just go on. Sorry, sir. Okay, no problem. The recommendation is actually to consider the temporal dimension of the inter of the uh, engagement of stakeholders, or to define. Next slide. I said already, but they are different. <laughs> okay, to define intervention points of engagement. So here you have on the graph the the cycle of the strategy development. There are different phases, so it's good to to define who we want to involve, at what stage, and with which uh, engagement instrument. For example, during the agenda setting. Um, phase, it's important that the potential intervention points are laid down in a management plan that for the further steps we know who we want to involve with. During the policy formulation phase, it's important to use the so-called Hall of Government approach because the bioeconomy covers a range of policy domains and it's important to involve all relevant governmental departments in the strategy. There is a good example in Austria. Austria is currently developing a um, bioeconomy strategy. So, um, and this strategy is developed jointly by three different ministries, the Econom Economy, Innovation and Technology and Environmental Ministry. The next phase, the strategy implementation. At this phase, all stakeholders could and should be involved, and especially the so-called bioeconomy ambassadors could uh, raise awareness at this phase. They could communicate stories and support the implementation of the measures set out in the strategy. The strategy evaluation phase is the, um, in this phase, it's important to to involve researchers and also consultants. And here a very important issue is the transparency. It should be ensured that because transparency is a key aspect of the evaluation process and the results of this evaluation should be also communicated in an accessible way. And potentially here the, the civil society could play an important role as a communicators of these results. Um, and so this was the last recommendation from our policy paper and Holger will continue with the relevance of this policy paper. Yes, um, so this was really only a brief overview of, of the five recommendations. Um, please have a look at the full policy paper. I think the link will be provided at the end of the presentation um, to, to read them in, in full detail. Um, but so why did we write this policy paper? Um, of course, to have some impact, um, and uh, we want to have some impact on the ongoing review of the European bioeconomy strategy. Um, as you know, this review has been ongoing um, for a while already, um, and it will continue over the summer, and um, by fall um, it, uh, it will be concluded. Um, it's also, um, so the policy paper is also feeding uh, into a discussion on linking the bioeconomy and the circular economy. Um, this is also being um, evaluated um, in the context of the review of the strategy. Um, does it make sense uh, to have a single bioeconomy strategy or should it be integrated uh, with the circular economy package? Uh, it's still an open question as far as I know. Um, we will know more um, by November this year um, in the context of the H2020 Bioeconomy Day. Um, the results of the review will be presented and based on that um, it will be decided uh, whether there will be an update of the European Bioeconomy Strategy, whether it will be integrated um, with the circular economy package um, or whether a third option um, will be taken. And um, maybe important to know this ongoing review um, is uh, being structured um, and, and driven by Unit F1 of the Bioeconomy Directorate uh, within DG Research. Um, but that directorate will not uh, make the final decision on whether there will be an update of the strategy. Um, that will be a political decision um, taken 
taken by others based on the outcomes of the review. And um, yeah, so far on that, could you move to the next slide, please? Um, last slide, um, what about Biostep? Uh, the project uh, will run through February of next year. Um, we've now concluded our um, stakeholder con consultation activities um, with the with, um, publication of the policy paper. Um, but there are a couple of more activities that are taking place. Um, so Ritza has mentioned at the beginning of the presentation already the living lab approach um, that we have been designing and implementing in two European regions. This is still ongoing um, and uh, yeah, we hope that we contribute with that process to the development of two regional bioeconomy strategies in Italy and in Bulgaria. Um, then towards the end of the project we will publish a final report which will actually reflect on all the engagement activities that we have designed and implemented um, and we will draw conclusions on whether those activities have been successful and effective in terms of engaging with the stakeholders or the public um, in discussions on the further development of the bioeconomy. And it's, it's an open process. We learn from the activities um, that we implement. Um, and with that final report, we want to um, provide lessons learned, um, not only to ourselves, uh, but to the interested public um, and, and give recommendations on whether it makes sense to apply let's say living labs as a concept or uh, whether it makes sense to um, to design um, an exhibition with bio-based products if the aim is to engage um, with the stakeholders and the public. And we will uh, finish the project with a final conference then in February of next year. And I think this was it from our side. Um, Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. you very, yes, no, thank you very much, Holger. Thank you very much, Sarissa. Here uh, on this slide, uh, you see the link to the policy paper Holger and Sarissa just have explained, uh, and also the, the link to the website of the BioStep project, where you will find much more information on the project, on the products which are already available, and on the uh, methodology and uh, measures to engage various uh, stakeholder groups. Could you move to the next slide, please? These are uh, still um, all the participants, all the partners in the consortium uh, from the BioStep uh, project. You see here a broad array from science to policy consultancy um, to universities or even Eurosportello del Veneto uh, for, uh, enterprise, from the Enterprise Europe Network. We come to the last slide. Uh, it's up to me to thank uh, both speakers uh, for this very um, fresh and good presentation which was filled with uh, best practice examples uh, and uh, new insights how to engage uh, 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 public uh, groups and stakeholder groups to make the bioeconomy uh, strategy live. We have an opportunity for the audience uh, to pose questions via the chat function here at the end of our session. Is there a question from somebody uh, to ask? I see, I don't see something. Uh, yes, Rhonda, <laughs> uh, she's thanks also speakers from Biostep, and she asked, Rhonda Smith, uh, she's uh, the head of the CombiBees project, uh, um, consortium leader, and also from Minerva, who runs the session, and she, her question is, you say that ensuring all stakeholders speak the same language, we find that too in CombiBees. Do you have any recommendation, particularly on how to develop a common language? Yes, that's, uh, that's a difficult task indeed and I think we experience that not only within the bioeconomy but um, it's, it's a usual uh, finding that, um, that 
it is difficult, for instance, to communicate research results um, to policymakers because research researchers focus on academic publications while uh, policymakers need clear-cut messages. And well, we we took the policy paper as an example of how such a communication could be designed. So very clear-cut messages. Um, directly targeted at the relevant audience. This is only one example, of course, where you make the link from research, in this case, our project and, uh, and its activities to the policy process. And there are many other channels where you need to connect with, um, with other stakeholders and make sure that information flows from, from, one, or from one producer um, to a certain audience. I think I can't, um, can't list key recommendations on how to design those, those communication tools or how to set up those channels. It's always very specific and, and comes down to the, to the issue that, that you're talking about. Um, when it is about the policy process, make sure that uh, research results are are presented in a way that um, that someone who's not coming from research really understands its meaning and its relevance um, for societal uh, challenges and and for the policy process. Yes. Thank you very much, Holger. It's in fact also our daily bread in Combi Days <laughs> to communicate uh, bioeconomy to different stakeholder groups and what comes out of research and to translate this language in an understandable uh, uh, language uh, outside the scientific bubble. There is another question from Onya Regan. Onya is also from the Combibis project from Chagash in Ireland. And Onya says, uh, congratulates uh, to the excellent part, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. She asks, I wondered whether and what evaluation of the various participation exercises took place. Uh, is there an evaluation of these uh, participation exercises already done or will this follow? Um, yes, we have started with an evaluation of the activities that have been concluded. For instance, uh, our policy workshops and the policy conference. Um, other activities are still ongoing. For instance, uh, the exhibition of bio-based products and also um, the living lab process. So we came up uh, with a list of uh, criteria for the effectiveness of the various tools and um, I must say it wasn't easy to, to come up with this list of effectiveness criteria. We basically had to start from scratch. Um, but um, in the course of the next month, we will, um, we will go into depth here and, and really see uh, what were the achievements of those tools. Did they meet our expectations and also the expectations of the stakeholders um, that were involved? Uh, we will write the findings down. And, and based on, on the summary of the findings, also come up um, with a number of um, recommendations. Again, recommendations, but this time others, namely um, research recommendations on how to improve um, yeah, engagement tools in the context of the bioeconomy. Okay, thank you very much for the answer again. Are there any questions outside? Uh, last chance to raise your hand. <laughs> I see something again from Rhonda. One moment, let me see. Um, so, um, this Rhonda, no, there is a question from Laura Diviney. Yes, uh, I have. I, I take this. She also thanks both speakers for a really engaging talk. The stakeholder engagement, uh, writes Ron, uh, Laura, the stakeholder engagement policy workshops were carried out in specific geographic contexts, Scotland and Austria. Are the results of these workshops broadly applicable to other European and other international countries? Or what is the role of geography location in this? Uh, for instance, some country might have different supports for SMEs, different regulatory structures and so. How transferable are the results? Asks uh, Laura Devenay and thanks you. 
That's a very good question. Um, I think the results are uh, broadly applicable because we didn't uh, focus so much on the specific context but more on the needs of certain stakeholder groups in the ongoing processes in these regions or countries. So for instance, in the in the case of Scotland, we focused on the needs of um, SMEs in, in the context of the bioeconomy. Of course, in the context of Scotland, we had we were talking about microalgae that is being produced um, and um, and the marine um, environment that provides re resources. Um, but but in general, it's it's more about the process um, of engagement um, that is relevant to the specific actors. Um, that was what we discussed. So. I think, um, for instance, in terms of engaging civil society actors, we learned a lot um, from um, the the uh, from the workshop that took place in Austria, and we also saw that there are different um, different uh, views on, depending on whom you ask, in the ministry in the ministries on when to engage with civil society actors. They would prefer to do it at a later st stage in the strategy process while we heard back from from the uh, civil society actors present during the workshop no, that they want to be involved in the first phase of the development of the strategy already. And I think, um, and this is also why we met then in Brussels again um, at the end of March, we validated those recommendations with again a broad group of stakeholders that came from I think about 17 member states were represented uh, in Brussels. We validated those recommendations and added new ones to make sure that um, that the recommendations as uh, written down in the final policy paper are broadly applicable um, and not uh, only applicable in specific contexts. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Holger, for the answer. I think we came to an end. Uh, great webinar, great participants. Thank you also uh, to the audience uh, for their vivid uh, participation. And thank you to you, uh, Sarissa and Holger, and also for the technical team, Marie and James in Andover, who facilitate the session. Uh, it remains to me, you can reach us, you see here our um, uh, email addresses. The webinar um, was recorded live. It will be put up uh, to YouTube and also to our website and from there it is retrievable, um, the, the slides are retrievable in PDF format. We will have a next webinar very soon, begin June on research, responsible research and innovation. I'm happy to have you on board again and thank you for the participation from my side. Stay tuned and let's uh, see you soon again. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you. Have a good day. Bye.